Welcome to Development Dynamics, a new season. We are delighted to continue offering conversations, reflections, and stories with leaders and practitioners who are doing social good. Social impact is a, is a whole field. There are uh, many areas of development, uh, and among the ones that are not commonly spoken about and we haven't featured as prominently here is um, faith, as much as we would have hoped, is the issue of religion, but also is community service and what that looks like. And um, you can tell I'm nervous. I'm nervous and most eager, more than I've ever been, because today we are hosting a man I truly honor, a man I truly value. Um, backstory, this man has stood with me. And I believe that uh, he, when I was telling him about this from day one, he mentioned that, um, you know, he charged me on so much for it. And then I told him, I will, I will invite you to the set one day. And I started thinking that, you know, he was always ready. And his, his response was, one day I'll be ready. But I kept thinking, no, 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 you are ready. The platform is probably the one that is not ready for you yet. But hopefully now time has aligned and things are here. And I'm delighted uh, and very, very happy to introduce to us Pastor Steve <laughs> Karidi Karao. Welcome on set. Thank you very much. Karibu sana. Um, now, I may have said Pastor, but also the, the back story of this is that um, I do not know anyone who has a heart for leadership. By that I mean raising leaders, not just raising followers, raising a mighty army of leaders in different fields. A man who has traversed across the world with the heart to give back and to lift community and to ensure that social good is done beyond just this generation. Always thinking about the future generation, very, uh, very aware of what today's actions will lead to in the future and deliberately raising people, raising leaders, putting systems in place um, and ensuring, while all of that, that he remains at the back of the scene. This might perhaps, if you Google him, you won't find him. <laughs> but we'll, you may see a few <clears throat> clips of him uh, doing good, not necessarily telling his story. So it's such an honor, it's such a delight for you to tell your story. And through telling your story, also share insights and reflections of your journey on this platform. Um, so where do we start? Can we start back to your very, very, very origins? Where, where, who is Steve and where does Steve come from? Um, Steve Karithi, yes. Karau, um, husband to Joyce mm -hmm. and father to 15 children. Hey! Uh, which is, yeah, another story on its own. Oh, we'll get to that. Yeah, mm -hmm. grew up in Isich, Isli. Mm -hmm. mm. And then kind of lived within that space, mm. moved to Muiki, then mm. back to Buru. Mm. So most of my childhood life mm. was in Eastlands mm. and that kind of area. Mm. Before even we talk about your childhood, what are your roots? Where does the, the origin and roots of, yeah. of, of, of Steve? <laughs> so, but, so, um, grew up in that area mm -hmm. and primarily because of what my parents were doing. Mm -hmm. So my dad, um, who's a bishop, Bishop mm -hmm. Karao, and my mom, mm -hmm. were, have lived since I knew them, basically mm -hmm. since I was born, mm -hmm. um, have been serving people in Madare mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. So our lives were always, no matter how far we went, mm. were always was always connected mm. to to that mm. space. Um, mm. Them doing ministry, mm. and me growing up in a pastor's house, mm. just watching, observing, learning, mm. loving some things, mm. hating other things, mm. deciding I will not be a pastor like them. Like this is the last thing I'll ever do. Mm. While at the same time appreciating just the good that I saw them mm. do them do let's let's stick with them a little bit more um where does bishop karao come from and where does mom also come from like their 
their their own roots then we can trace yours and your siblings roots yeah. from that uh, like where do they where do they hail from how did they also find themselves to do in ministry like what was their path how do they meet <laughs> So my mm-hmm. my parents journey is very interesting. So mm-hmm. they both come from Meru. Mm-hmm. Um but they met in Nairobi. Okay. Yeah, in 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 Isich. Mm. And my dad, my dad I think he went up to what um whatever level of education mm-hmm. um that he got to mm-hmm. back then. Mm. Then he decided he wants to come to Nairobi to look for work. Mm-hmm. So he tells his dad um I'm I'm heading out mm. and I think he had only like 20 shillings which was enough then wow. for transport but mm. it was basically a one way ticket mm. um with with no money to go back no return no return mm. and so he tells his dad that mm. his dad is like no um there's someone who owes me money give me a few days mm. let me get the, the the money from that guy so at least I can you can have some extra if you need to Suspense, come back yeah. and sustain yourself mm. and stuff like that mm. But my dad was so determined that he was like no if if I wait for a few more days this guy will probably talk me out of it. Mm. And so he was like no it's fine. I he, he left. So he basically came to Nairobi with like 20 shillings mm. which might 0.2 <laughs> Uh, cents in dollars <laughs> yes yeah. back then so yeah. now it might translate <laughs> to like maybe 2k I, i'm yeah. not so sure because mm. that was enough to pay for his transport mm. and then when he got here mm. um he went to isich and that's Absolutely. where he kind of connected to mm. to people mm. um other relatives and people he had known before mm. and he started working mm. um he used to work at a like a, a restaurant okay restaurant mm-hmm. right mm. um he was cooking selling porridge and stuff like that mm. and he basically built his life and made his way from there from that foundation yeah mm. yeah how did they meet then so my mom was a nurse so mm. she came um she was studying nursing mm. and i think one day my my dad's friend brought my dad to visit my mom Okay. that's how they they, they met they met yeah right. yeah yeah are you the first born i'm not the first born uh-huh. um we have i have three other siblings uh-huh. so big brother big sister i'm the third born and uh-huh. then i have a younger sister right yeah what are your fond memories of 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 uh, of your very early childhood like what do you when when you hear early childhood that that stage of like zero to five what what are the memories that you have of that time I think the greatest treasure and this is a thread that runs throughout mm-hmm. till to date has mm-hmm. been uh God has given me amazing family mm. amazing family mm. and friends who become more like family mm. than just mm. friends mm. Mm. and so when I was young that's that's a thing I remember like my mm. parents were there for me mm. uh, my siblings were there for me mm. we, we are very we are very close mm. up to date mm. we 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 talk quickly mm. we, we have you know there was family whatsapp group and exactly. yeah it's very 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 active very yeah. active yeah. and we are constantly we, we know like it's crazy how like uh even my big sis or my big bro they are traveling and they'll be like tomorrow i'll be in mombasa or tomorrow i'm going to rwanda or whatever mm. like and i've arrived mm. we, we constantly are just mm. updated yeah updated and mm. remain connected and that started from that started when you were, yeah. back then and yeah. I, i used to think like every family in the world looks like this that. yeah yeah it, it used to be interesting like the last piece of chapati used to get spoiled the last banana used to get spoiled the last piece yeah. of anything cause I would want to eat it then I would think if it's the last one probably my sister let me leave it for this other person but everyone else is thinking the same yeah the until same. the thing goes bad what do you attribute that to is it is it genetics or is it how you were raised it, like w- w- that that's a very amazing thing just to have yeah and back then I didn't really appreciate it until mm. now as you grow then mm. you begin to realize like wow mm. not everyone mm. functions like this mm. but um i i think it's just how my parents mm. raised us they were deliberate for to 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 have you guys care for one another and for them yes mm. and 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 it wasn't necessarily like this is your sister take care of them mm. it was just i think by their actions mm. like my my parents were always very very present mm. yeah mm. and have up to date we had a of course growing up my dad was still my dad you know mm. he would walk into the house 
and you'd leave the room <laughs> he has his, his chair yeah. and um, we were not really tight yeah um we became much more close mm. later on mm. i mean he's a true meru man so yeah. there's no there's no emotion yeah yeah um and, and even like growing up it used to be funny because um sometimes you'd come like with mates or a handbag and hand it to my mom and this was his way of saying sorry so you're like ah these guys had been fighting kind of because he'd never say those words mm. but i think as he's grown older mm. we've become more tight he, mm. he's able to to express emotions more and we feel mm. like we are much much more connected so we've grown closer but when we were young mm. he was present but not as mm. yeah accessible so if you needed mm. something it, mm. you'd go to your mom mm. like ambia daddy you know <laughs> tell my yeah yeah that's 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 what they are but they were definitely very present they, they were present yeah. loving caring mm-hmm. and and as you said they would their lifestyle is what demonstrated what living and proper family um c- structure looks like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. amazing do you have you've mentioned you have i mean a very close knit family how does that translate into um and I ask this because much later in, in in stories when people are reflecting often people reflect their journeys also through other things that influence them around childhood um in your childhood was there was there like other family members um other potential visitors or people around you whose influence also uh, has you can look back and think oh yeah i saw this with with person x or neighbor x yeah yeah so our house just by virtue of who my parents were as pastors but um just how kind and open and generous they were our house was constantly full of people we were hosting guys from shags who needed a place to stay for a couple of months mm. as they found their way in the city mm. or someone who's traveled from a different country mm. so we constantly hosted i think we've hosted i would not be mistaken to say thousands of people okay. like yeah um mm. just over the years mm. uh, the, probably like 15 years of my my childhood mm. And so there was always people coming mm. and going. Mm. And I wouldn't pick a specific person per se from that time, mm. but one of the things that struck me is how some of the guys who we hosted mm-hmm. later on turned out to be such amazing friends. Mm. Like they came through because mm. as we grew up, you're going to university, mm. you guys don't have enough money. Mm. they remember mm. like they were there mm. they were living in our house when they were going to university mm. and they just come through mm. and these are things you I, i was not fully aware of until i became much older mm. um cuz cuz they did it very out of respect and just out of um giving back mm. but in a way that i always thought it's my parents who are providing mm. right mm. but there are now those individuals later you you hear a story like allah this is a guy who mm. came through so there are those individuals and they still stand with us so whenever we have a family function whenever there is a rurashio mm. or a barrio the good and the bad mm. there's these figures who are mm. con- have constantly been there mm. and 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 just seeing that um makes it a complete circle mm. yeah how did having an influx of visitors uh, uh, visitors and <laughs> relatives at home how did that impact on you and your siblings when you were young like just as children now were you feeling oh my space is occupied or i'd like to i mean you already saying how sharing was you know your way of caring and it was second nature but did you feel like it's it's too much at any point um how how did it impact on you and your siblings So initially I used to think it's normal. I just mm. used to think this everyone is, lives is, like this. Yeah, yeah, this is this is life. This mm. is what everyone else does. Mm. Um but of course now as you grow up you're like yeah, I don't want to share my bed mm. with people. Um I love my space. Mm. I, I I protect my space mm. um a lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh so there was those moments you just be like do I have to do this mm. but the interesting thing is our, our parents especially as we became older and became more aware of our space mm. they were they they they, they allowed us mm. to to say no mm. to some things mm. and they they guarded us so it never got to a point where you just felt like 
this is too much mm. yeah so there was yeah. democracy somehow yeah. as you grew older as you, oh, yes of course, yeah, as you yeah. earn your <laughs> your voice yes yes yeah very, um very but very largely mm. we until i think i moved out of home we were still hosting Right. people it's just that now we had more say like i like this one they can sleep in my room and yeah. be here for years yeah. or i don't like this one can they just pass through quickly <laughs> quickly <laughs> have yeah. them relocate to yes. a different a different place yeah. um so let's let's move then to your school like your primary school um where where did that happen and what do you remember of your of your junior school or of your primary school so my primary school so i went to two primary schools mm -hmm. um after kindergarten mm -hmm. um race course mm -hmm. kindergarten was guru nanak mm -hmm. then race course wait were you still living wh where were you living at the time in isli oh in isli okay. yes yeah mm -hmm. so um so i went to race course mm -hmm. and then did most of my up to what probably grade five mm -hmm. race course mm -hmm. It was interesting. That was that, and later on we moved to Buru. Mm. Um, but while we were still in race course, mm. um, I used to be very. I was bright in school, mm. and I used to top the class. It was just standard. Mm. Like it was so obvious. Mm. They stopped giving me gifts. So I like, you are bribed. Oh, if you are number one, I'll buy you a bike or yeah. something. Yeah. It's, it's just like Steve will mm. be number mm. one, mm. and that was interesting because it also allowed me to get away with things I shouldn't have gotten away with. <laughs> naughty, right? naughty boy. Yeah, so the teachers would be like, something has happened, it cannot be Steve. Yeah. And then just the blame falls on everyone else. Uh, especially the first from the back. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and I used to think like, this is unfair, I was just like, it's me. Yeah. I remember just incidences where um, later on when I was what, in grade eight, mm. um, I would go home for lunch then i would nap for a couple of minutes then go back to school so on this day i overslept so of course going back to school the teacher is there with the cane mm. for waiting for late comers mm. and he's like crazy right mm. and i'm just like what happened but i because of how i had been treated mm. and what i had gotten with i would i would never even lie i would be like i fell asleep mm. And you just laugh and be like, go to class mm. versus someone else who has to who has to either lie and, not, lie and yeah, and mm. even with that, they won't get away with yeah, they it, still right? Be yeah, they still be punished. Oh. And that was a very different dynamic mm. that later on shaped a lot of how I began to see the world around me mm. and um, my work in development. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and I'm eager to hear that because already from 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 an early age, there, there, there is there is love and comfort in the family <coughs> setting. There is there is this uh, you're bright already. Then there is there is there is privilege, quote unquote, um, as to how the world is treating you because you are also honest and you're trustworthy. So you don't have to concoct <laughs> yeah. diversions and lies to to fit in. I'm very eager to see how it plays out in the future. But what 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 subjects were you like inclined to? What 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 were your school times um, highlights? <laughs> so I had the good and the bad. Mm -hmm. um, so the good is first. I love science. Just mm. to answer your question, mm. I I love science. I love space, mm. and um, there's a story that's connected to that. So we I did um, race course. Mm -hmm. then we moved to Mwiki when I was still in race course, mm. which was tough, mm. right? Because um, from Isli where I could walk to school, mm. my parents move us to Mwiki. Mwiki mm. back then is nothing like the current Mwiki now. Mm. Um, tiny house, mm. no running water, no electricity. Mm. Um, and we had to use the bus. And it was, we used to leave the house probably like at five. In the morning. Yeah, with flashlights. Because mm. that place had just one matatu when mm. we moved there. Mm. And the name of the matatu was old is gold so you can imagine what that matatu looked like right <laughs> and then later that matatu the owner got a second one oh, okay. but it used to be like if you see the matatu go mm. just know like it's over yeah. you you either walk for like what 30 40 minutes mm. to the next town to mm. get her so if you miss it you go back home so my mom used to work at um kenya bus service mm -hmm. um back then and she was a nurse mm. so she influenced the management mm. and we got two buses 
uh, assigned that for that route. So one would leave Tao mm -hmm. while the other one is leaving Mwiki. Mm -hmm. So if you miss either one, you just yeah. know you have to wait for a couple of hours yeah. Yeah, before the next one arrives. Mm. And um, just that movement and stuff. As a kid, I enjoyed it, mm -hmm. but my, my, my older siblings didn't. Mm. Because they had their friends, they had electricity mm. and all these mm. things. Mm. But for me, because I was younger, it mm. was just adventure. There were animals yeah. and stuff like mm. that, mm. that um, more space for me to explore. Mm. But later on, that was significant. And I mentioned it because mm. that was the price we had to pay for now my parents to buy the house in Buru. Ah, we didn't okay. know it then. So mm. they had seen this house, mm. taken out a loan, mm. um, but they now needed to, to downgrade, downgrade yeah. yes, mm. save as much as they could. Mm. And we used to pass by mm. that house um, in Buru and my mom used to point to her saying, that's our house, that's our house, that's mm. our house, that's where we move. At the time your mom was working at Kenya Bus Service yeah, and your dad was still... My, my, my dad was hotel? doing ministry, okay, okay. Um, pastor, ministry. Okay. Um, but he also used to work for a different um, company. Yeah. So ministry was not full-time yet. And then later on, he moved to full-time ministry. So when you moved to Buruburu, yeah. that's also the time you moved, when you moved your house to Buruburu, it's also the time that you moved schools from race course? Yeah, now mm -hmm. to Buruburu 1. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was in grade 6. That's mm -hmm. where I fell in love with girls because <laughs> of adolescence and that kind of just started affecting my academics yeah. and i was getting cocky at that mm. point i was mm. just like whether i study or not mm. uh, I'll, I'll i'll pass mm. but then i also fell in love with science mm. completely and my my best friend back then his name was is john odito mm. um i think he's a doctor in the u.s now mm. he, the mother was american the dad was kenyan mm -hmm. and the mother started a science club mm. Wow. And I just completely fell in love with science mm. and we were studying space and stuff like that. It was really, really interesting. Mm. But there's an incident that happened then that um, also ended up shaping a lot of how I see the world. Mm -hmm. I remember the during the graduation ceremony, like mm -hmm. end of club, we're about to, I think, go to grade eight. So no more, just focus on academics, mm -hmm. none of these other things. Mm -hmm. And it, there was an award ceremony. Mm -hmm. And we were probably about maybe 15 to 20 students mm. who are part of the science club. Mm. And we were being awarded for just different things, mm. keeping time, mm. just showing creativity and stuff like that. Mm. And every single person got an award, but I didn't get one. Except you. Yep. And some of them were called twice. And that moment was one of the most terrible moments of my life at humbling. that point. Why, why, what happened? And so I was, First of all, I was praying, God, please open this ground so I can swallow me. Because mm. I felt terrible. Mm. I was like, I love science. Um, I think I've been doing well mm. and I might be even better than one or two other people, mm. yet no one is recognizing me. Mm. And that went on for like 20 minutes, like I'm balancing tears. Mm. I just want for this thing to end. Mm. I, I dash, I never come back. Mm. And when they came to the end, they were giving out the final trophy, the big award. Mm. It was mine. Oh. Okay. And that just changed everything. And that just became such a powerful lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for me. Yeah. It, it, oh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's one of the things that mm. marked my, 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 my childhood, like my mm. education experience. That's one of the highlights. Mm. Um, I, I still have that trophy. Mm. Yeah, I'm just like, it mm. always reminds me. Yeah. Um, sometimes things look like this, yeah. but then they turn out. The end is, the yeah. end can be yeah. <laughs> very yeah. rewarding mm -hmm. in, in this mm -hmm. case. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so did you pass your class eight exam class eight yes class eight. I, I i did i did you're not the class seven generation no <laughs> class eight <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. eight four four mm -hmm. um yes i did mm -hmm. i did well mm -hmm. and i went to a good high school which i almost didn't go to mm -hmm. um i went to i ended up going to strathmore mm -hmm. That uh, so strathmore they they, they have you do ex um an interview mm -hmm. a written exam right and then they look at all your results, not just your KCP. Right. They, they look at, cause, yeah, they, they, one exam is not a proper measurement, right? Absolutely. And so they, they do their homework. Mm. 
So I qualified, mm. went to Strathmore, which was influenced by my brother. I didn't even know about Strathmore. So my brother back then was studying at Nairobi school. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, yeah, Strath is a good school if mm. you can qualify. And I, he knew I had the brains mm. and the smarts to get mm. in. He was mm. like, yeah, go for it. Mm. And I was set on on going to a, a, a day school. Mm. I did not want to you do, did, you do not a boarding want school. Boarding life. All my other siblings were mm. um, already in boarding schools mm. other than my younger sister, but I was set. Mm. Mm -hmm. on going to a day school. So mm -hmm. got to Strathmore, mm -hmm. um, qualified. Mm -hmm. The fee structure came, um, admission letter. Mm -hmm. Then my dad calls me, takes me for a drive and he tells me, I know you worked really hard and you're supposed to join this school, but we do not have this money. We mm -hmm. cannot afford it. Yeah. And I fully understood. I was mm -hmm. like, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just look for something mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. But then my mom was like, no. I, that's a school you wanted. It's mm -hmm. a good school. Mm -hmm. You worked hard. We will do what it takes mm -hmm. um, to get you in. And and she, I mean, she had her side hustle. She mm -hmm. she she they they really worked hard mm -hmm. um, to do mm -hmm. to. So that's why I ended. You ended up. Yeah, in, yeah. In for yeah, yeah, part of my high school. For for, for part of your high school. Part what what do you school. remember about Strath? I Strath was. First of all, it's a bougie school. So. Very bougie, <laughs> which was a problem. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm a guy from Isli. <laughs> that's, and then Buru, which is Islando, no, right? But at the time, <laughs> still. At the time, Buru, Buru was not. But Islando. nothing in comparison Neither to, right now, to, but... to the guys I found at Strath. That's true. Because Strath was different. So my first lesson, mm. first teacher, mm. English, is a white guy. Oh, wow. I'm just like, wait. I've never, I've seen white people, I've interacted with some they of them. They've lived in your house. Yeah, they've lived <laughs> in my house. But still, yeah. this is, this is, I've not seen a mm. white teacher in mm. Kenya. Mm. What was he teaching? English. Ooh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> rightfully so. <laughs> yeah, rightfully so. Yeah. But I was just like, wow, this is, this is a lot. Mm. Um, it, it, and I, I, a bit of culture shock. Yes, mm. culture shock. Then we go for lunch. Mm -hmm. Um... And it's a two-course meal. So you have the dessert after and the initial. And there's no spoon. It's just a fork and a knife. And I'm like, where is the spoon? How do I eat without a spoon? Right? Uh, and, the, and there's dessert. Yeah, and then there's dessert. I'm like, Jesus. yeah, and there's the apple pie. You know, things I've only heard about. Oh, dear. <laughs> and um, you guys are hanging out. Mm. You're talking about, yeah, it's 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 holiday. As guys are going to Shags. You guys are talking about they go to coast. Some of them will fly out of the country for the holiday. And I was just intimidated. Mm. And my self-esteem just went mm. really, really, really down. Mm. So I'm one of the brightest students. Mm. But even that now gets affected. Mm. And I start hating school. Mm. And I start missing classes. How do you? So I would that? wake up, um, go to Tao. Mm. So of course I'm in a mat up to Tao. The school bus used to pick us up from Tao. Mm -hmm. So go to Tao. In the bus I'm with my friends from Jamu, so do each other schools. Yeah, Apa. Yeah, yeah. Apa. Mm. And, 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 and guys from like the boys, because mm. Strath is known as a nice school. Yeah. So a lot of um, guys would like, let's switch. Mm clothes mm -hmm. so that I can hit on that girl. So Ooh. like I can pretend I'm from from oh. from Strath. So you give them your jam Yeah, I'll give them my, my blazer mm -hmm. and my tie. Yeah. And then I'll take theirs. Yeah. And then I mean it's like in a jamu and stuff yeah. where if you're in that uniform, no one touches you. Yeah. And I was tiny, I was small. Yeah. But now I started feeling like, yeah, me I want that one. Yeah. I want the jamu blazer. Yeah. You take this one. Yeah. And ended up just hanging out with guys who would cut classes. So mm -hmm. I started cutting class. So mm -hmm. we'll just go go to Tao, watch movies, mm. just hang around. And I just missed so many classes. At some point, the school wondered if I had transferred. Wow. But at home, they know I'm supposed to be in to school. school. And then just my grades started mm. going down. They start getting affected. You yes, know, yeah, problem. yeah, immensely. Mm. So now I started doing supplementary exams mm. um, just to qualify to go to the next class. Mm. And that's when one of the teachers um, who was an assigned mentor mm. spoke to me and he showed me how I entered the school. He was like, I looked at your grades. Mm. You are doing really, you are very, very bright. You are one of the our top selections. Mm. But now I'm doing Akina zero 01, zero 02 in some of my mm. Kina Kem and the rest. So he's like, What's the problem? What's mm. happening? Mm. 
And by the time I'm in form three, they tell me I need to um, repeat the grid form mm. three. Mm. And I'm like, Z, you, there's no way. That. Mm. I'm not taking that. Mm. Like, it's just too embarrassing. Mm. And so, of course, now that gets to my parents. Yeah. Um, they get involved. Mm. Um, I've been hiding report forms and just trying to really, and they trusted me. And mm. I've always passed. So I constantly had excuses. Mm. And because I used to get away with so much, I, I still had a lot of goodwill. Mm. But by the time I'm in Form 3, I'm, I decide there's no way I'm repeating. So my dad gets a boarding school for me. Now all my siblings are in have been to boarding schools, yeah. including now my younger sibling who is in boarding school in Meru. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. So he gets a school in Meru. And first I look at the menu. And I'm like, porridge, porridge, porridge for breakfast <laughs> every day. And then lunch is gideri or ugali every day. I eat apple pie and I use a fork and knife and you're taking me where? And I refuse. I flat out refuse. Because I'm I also I'm, I'm also my dad's yeah. son. Mm. So I can be hard headed. Mm. And my dad is still the Meru guy. He's mm. like, if you don't go to this school, you are not going. And and I, I, I felt terrible because mm. they had sacrificed so much mm. to get me into Strathmore. Mm. Yeah. But at the same time, I was just like, there's no way. I, I am not doing this. Mm. I am not going to this school. So I stay home for week one, week two, week three. He's not budging. I'm not budging either. I'm just, it's fine. I don't have to finish school. I'm bright. I'll make my way in life. Then, of course, once again, my mom steps in. Mm. And my mom Mother, is like, Tavini. yes. Uh. <laughs> so grateful for her. Mm. Um, my mom tells me, okay, so what school do you want to go to? Tell me. So we, I pick a school. My, my neighbor, her name is Vicky, used to go to a school called CUNA. It was oh. a mixed school. And that's like, CUNA Academy? CUNA Academy. Oh, that's uh, another bougie school. <laughs> From bougie to bougie. Yeah, but a different type of bougie, yeah. right? It's just, mm. yeah, the guys are well off, mm. but education standards, mm. nothing like Strathmore. Strathmore was a really good school. Mm. Um, so I, I'm like, Mix school, nini nini, and she used to come home almost every weekend. I was like, this is the if, if it's a boarding school, this is the boarding school. I'll, 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 it has, it yeah. has everything. It has the right menu mm. and it has girls. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. So I get that, and I have a school called Karengata. Mm -hmm. But I go to Karengata, it's just boys, and mm. it doesn't have as much luxury. I'm just, I refuse. Mm. But I get, I qualify for both. Mm. Cuna didn't take too much for me to qualify. Like anyone mm. could get into mm. it. Mm. So I ended up in CUNA mm. and that was just now the other extreme mm. where you could do anything because mm. in, in the sense that like um, guys are so spoiled, like they're mm. coming from extremely wealthy families, but the kids really don't care. Mm. And as long as you're paying the school fees, you can get away with anything. But it was also not the proper kind of school in the sense that you're not even paying the same amount of school fees, right? So if you drive in with a Mercedes, there's a fee structure for you versus if you drive oh, wow. in with a different car or if you come walking, right? Mm. So after some time, I'm just like, I'm really having fun. I'm mm. enjoying this. Mm. But I'm like, I am I wasting myself? Mm. So one day, um, we as guys are doing exams, mm. I do like three or, three or four papers. I think you are doing eight or 11 papers, I forget. Mm. But I go home for the weekend, which I think there was a concert or something happening. So I extend mm -hmm. the weekend. I think Lost Boys were in town oh. or something. And I was mm. like, I have to go watch. Mm. So I extend. Mm. By the time I'm coming back to school, so my parents know I'm on midterm. And then when I get back to school, they've already finished the rest of the papers. And I... The teacher said, it's too late. We, 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 there's nothing we can do. Mm. But then when the results come out, I had done, I think, only half of the papers. Mm. I have the most marks. And I was just like, how? Yeah, how do I top the class where I've only done half and everyone else has done? Mm. And that's the moment mm. I knew um, it, it wasting. Was a system, yes, yeah. I'm mm. wasting, I'm wasting my, my, my potential. Mm. And this is not right. So when we closed school, mm. I asked my mom, can we go back to the other school that had accepted me, Karengata? Mm. So this was your choice now? Yes, now, now this mm. was my choice. Now mm. I was beginning to sober up. Mm. I was like, let me go to this uh, school. You get there when you're in? Form three or four? Uh, form four. Mm -hmm. So that's where I ended up. I, form three, part of form three. Mm. Yeah, because I, I didn't stay too long in CUNA mm. just because of that. I was just like, yeah, mm. let me. So mm. part of form three and then into form four. Mm. 
So transferred to Karengata, mm -hmm. which was much more sober. Mm. That's when I did my exam, and then after that, went to university. Before, <coughs> so in Karengata, now you're focused. You are, um, you know, there is a big determining um, examination coming in. Um, how, what was largely that year like? It was it was nice. I, I um, it it was a more balanced system mm. in terms like you had kids from wealthy families, mm. from not so wealthy families. So I think it grounded me. Mm. And then I had been through all these other spaces. Mm. So I think that's where I kind of started getting my foot in. Mm. And also the interesting thing was um, that's where I learned some of my strengths. Mm -hmm. I had always been tiny, mm. which I really didn't, and, and, and I struggled through primary school um, partly because of that. Because mm. it was back then, schools are fast body mm. and stuff like that, mm. and I'm tiny and I can't um, get into fights because I'll get beaten up. Mm. So I had learned how to make friends with the right people. <laughs> and um, I, I, I just knew how to get my way. So I was very... I got away, I, I, I made my way through that system then, yeah. but it, it became much more highlighted in Karengata because mm. this is a proper boarding school mm. where things get stolen mm. and stuff like that. Mm. And so my friends, I, I had one of my, my, my very good friends mm. who's now also a pastor. Mm. Um, his name is Eric. Mm. Like he was a guy you do not mess with mm. and he was my friend mm. completely. Mm. So I, in, it's there when I realized like, yeah, so for me to make my way, not just through education, but through life, mm -hmm. I need to learn certain mm. skills. Mm. Um, who do I connect with mm. and those kinds of things mm. outside now of family mm. and my other mm. friends. And, and speaking of that time, and broadly as, as a reflection of high school, it's also the time where you're influenced a lot by pop culture, by music, by movies, by uh, the world of technology as we knew it then, which was a very much, but then it was also. Yeah. Uh, what, was, what were those things influencing you um, around that time? I think um, so. S for Strath, mm -hmm. Strath is a very solid school, like um, best run institution mm. that are education institution that mm. I've interacted with, mm. and they didn't have a lot of monitoring mm -hmm. of students. Mm. So you you just learn like it's break 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 time ends in five minutes before even the bell is rung. You are kind of just all together walking towards mm. classes. Mm -hmm. And then now you, I had seen some other extreme schools in Primo. Mm. Okay, and you have prefects and noisemakers and mm. punishment and those mm. kinds of things. Mm. But one of the things that I learned from Strath was just, I had, I, I kind of caught the dimension of personal discipline mm. that now started kicking in later on when yeah. I went to Karengata. Yeah. And so I think that kind of balanced me out because mm. you would have guys who'd cut class and go drink, mm. um, who'd, drink the there's this liquid you used to use for in the lab mm. the clear liquid mm. and i mean it's alcoholic mm. and um replace it with water get her and that yeah get you. high and mm. then when they're doing the experiments the mm. the, 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 the litmus paper is not changing colors <laughs> and the teacher is so stressed he's so confused mm. and so guys are drunk guys are high and everyone yeah. knows what's happening yeah but because of some of the lessons I had picked up just from the environment that mm. was Strathmore, mm. I was much more measured. Mm. I was much more measured. Mm. And I had now begun to build a reputation as a sober guy. So right. people could trust me. Mm. And so I think that kind of helped me navigate. Mm. Um, alcohol, tech, mm. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't as extreme anymore mm. within that mm. space. And before we wind up with, with, with childhood growing and schooling, um, you mentioned that your parents are pastors, so there is a stereotype about pastors' kids. Do you feel at some point you or either of your siblings got into the stereotype? I mean, fr from your story, you can tell that you got into some extremes, <laughs> but you found your way back. Um, what's your reflection? Uh, and, and I know it will connect also later with, with, with life and how you're also raising your own children, but at the, at the, at the point, at the time, was, was there like a particular dimension of you in PK and, and, and did you fall into any of the stereotypes? So maybe three things mm -hmm. um, that we kind of highlight what that was like for me. Mm -hmm. um, so one, there was an incident where my dad would come home, park the canoe in Buru, 
parks the car outside. Then he gets late. He's like Steve in Gishagari, and I used to love it. It was just mm. a very short distance, mm. drive but the car yeah, in. I would mm. drive the car in, mm-hmm. and and I used to really enjoy it. I mean, I'm a young boy, mm. so one day I drive in, and I um, hit the fence, mm. and I just damaged the front bumper, the grill, and I felt terrible, completely. I was like, mm. I'll never touch that car again. Mm. It's fine. Mm. And um, and you know I mean, my my parents come rushing out because they hear the the, the, the crash, bang. yeah, mm. the bang, mm. and they come out and they are like, I was so sorry, mm. I felt terrible, because mm-hmm. in as much as we never slept hungry, mm. I knew this mm. was a sacrifice. Mm. This would be money that would mm. have been used elsewhere, mm. and so my, I just go to my room. I tell my parents sorry. Then I go to my room. Mm. Um, I'm just feeling bad. Mm. The following day, um, the car is taken to the garage. I think after a day or two, my dad brings it back. Mm. He packs it outside and he tells me, Steve, pack it in. Pack it in. Mm. And I was so overwhelmed. And I, I've never forgotten that moment that I caused so much damage, mm. but you still trust me. Mm. Again, you're still mm. giving me another chance. Mm. And I think growing up as a pastor's child was kind of like that, mm. where there are moments you mess mm. up, mm. But there was so much grace mm. for my parents mm. to always like, yeah, you messed up, but come back, mm. come back. Mm. So I think that incident highlights it. Mm-hmm. But also seeing there's so much politics in church, mm-hmm. right? Mm. And um, it's I remember just seeing because I had access, visitors would come, people mm. would come, mm. um, you just overhear conversations not even intentionally sometimes, but you just catch the stories mm. and get a bigger picture of what was happening. Mm. And there was so much fighting and people wanting positions. Mm. And my parents were caught in this space. Web, yeah. yeah, where mm. you're just listening to some of the stories and seeing people pretend to be one thing, but they are not that. And I was like, and then of course, he's a pastor in Madare. Mm. So there's no money in it. Mm. And now he's a full-time pastor mm. by the time I'm I'm doing high school and university. Mm. And I was, I never want to do this. Mm. In my heart, I kind of knew mm. I would be a pastor. <laughs> um, I used to say I would either be pastor or president. Mm. It was one of mm. either. Um, so, but now just seeing this, mm. especially now as a teenager and just having a better understanding, mm. I wanted to make a deal with God. So I was like, God, um, there's a guy in the Bible who had 12 kids, mm. right? Jacob. Mm. And I was like, God, Jacob had 12 children. Mm. His last was his favorite. Mm. I know you want me to be a pastor, mm. but I'm also gifted and talented in so many other things. I'm mm. bright in school and I can do so much mm. more. Mm. So let's make a deal. Mm. Let me do all these other things. Mm. Let me do business. Let me do all these other things. Mm. And then when I'm like 60, 70, I, can retire I will by, yeah, I'll mm. retire as a pastor. Mm. I will serve you faithfully because mm. I was determined mm. not to be there in mm. that space. I had just seen too many tears, too much struggle mm. um, from my mom and just mm. them being fought and mm. constantly mm. showing up to still serve. Mm. But I didn't like it. Mm. And then there was no money in it. Mm. I was just like, I don't mm. know. I don't want, I don't mm. do this. You yeah. mentioned three things. So the experience with the car, um, the, yeah. the, the, the church politics. And the, and the final one, one mm. is, which I used to struggle with, is people who treat you differently. Mm. Um, so you, you're in Madare, mm. pastor's child, mm. Um, you'd go visit someone in the house mm. and they would be like, I mean, it's mm. South African culture. You bring mm. out the best plate mm. and the best. Mm. But there used to be a lot of that. Mm. And so I felt like I wasn't so sure if I was accepted mm. or it's just for me mm. or it's just because I'm my, past, I'm my right. son's dad. Mm. And so for some time later, I tried to leave outside of his mm. shadow. Just, mm. This guy is too big, he's mm. too mm. overwhelming. My mm. parents are, and I was trying to mm. run away and just get out of that. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. At this point, we are learning more about your story uh, from childhood. And I guess you've gotten now to the point where you've done your Kenya Certificate of Secondary Examination mm-hmm. at at Karengata. Yes. Karengata Academy. Yes. It was in Karen? Yeah, it was in Karen. Oh, wow. So you'd yes. move all the way from Buru 
but it was a boarding school so oh yeah, yeah. all right so, okay yeah. so you did your final secondary examination there yes um and and so transition us now from that point <laughs> so karengata um my mom once again checks mm-hmm. into the story mm. she believes in education she, yeah. she's a very firm believer in education um so we have to go to high to university Everywhere. regardless of your grade yeah. you're my child you have to go into university mm. regardless of the finances mm. she'll do what it takes mm. so went to so then i wanted i, I was i was torn between usiu and dista mm-hmm. wanted to do to become a psychologist oh wow because i thought I, i'm a good listener mm-hmm. And I thought I'll make a lot of money just by sitting and listening. <laughs> and listening. I'm making a lot of money just by anyway. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so that that's what I had figured. Mm. But that was USIU. I think there's a subject I hadn't done mm. that disqualified me uh. from even applying mm. for that course. So I settled for Dista. Mm-hmm. So Dista. I, w- I think they had psychology mm-hmm. um but I also also wasn't qualified because of a subject that I hadn't done in mm. primary school mm. in high school. Mm-hmm. So I decided to fill out the papers for Comdev, community development. Yeah, community development. Mm-hmm. So I was filling out the papers, mm-hmm. the guys there are looking at me papers like you are perfect for communication mm. and this star is known for communication mm. and they're just trying to convince me to mm. switch. Mm. But for me I knew I just wanted to get into the system. Mm. Um, do my community development for like a same or two, then transit mm. back again. Mm-hmm. But before I had gone to Desta, mm-hmm. so because back then it used to take like one year mm. before you get called. Yeah. It wasn't as quick yeah. a transition. Mm. I was also volunteering mm-hmm. in Madare mm-hmm. at a Compassion International program, and mm-hmm. um, that was being hosted by my parents' church. Mm. But going for evening classes, doing studying software engineering. Uh. So software engineering was my first th- the thing I thought I would go for because mm. I was like back then we mm. were learning how to write code we didn't mm. even call it code mm. it was visual basics gene in in yeah programming C++, C++. yeah mm. but I knew this right. will just make me extremely wealthy yeah. and I still had that thing in my head like I do not want to be a pastor mm. and be poor mm. so <laughs> I'm like this is it that I'm ahead of my curve right yeah. um and I would have be ahead of my curve mm. right because i mean programming now is coding now is such a I mean, big deal yeah, yeah. Mm. but i'm doing co- um programming while at the same time volunteering in madare mm. serving mm. and volunteering in madare was just for the money I'm, i'm out of high school my dad tells me if you volunteer i'll give you a stipend ah right but if you just stay at home it's mm. fine you mm. fi- so no, i, I no did it for the open. money yeah. yeah it wasn't mm. a lot it was like five g's mm. but i was like it's better than nothing because mm. you are no longer a student so there's mm. no pocket money yeah. there's no other source of income mm. and i've stayed home i sold all the newspapers mm. and everything Watched all the yeah channel and <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so i was like this is mm. um let me just do this mm. so software engineering volunteering mm. but now working with people mm while doing the programming programming made me realize i never want to live the rest of my life sitting behind a computer mm. i actually enjoy this mm. so that kind of was like the next best thing after software engineering that might have money in my mind was mm. psychology mm. i'll be helping people mm. and i'll still make money mm. but then my grades refused mm. it didn't align mm. so comdev hoping to switch to psychology at some point mm-hmm. But when I was when I started doing comdev um that's when I knew I actually enjoyed this mm. uh, received a prophetic word this is the right place this mm. is what you're doing is what I want you to do mm. and I just stuck mm. to mm. it so mm. this was Dester let's 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 stay there a little bit um so you mentioned two things that I I find interesting the, the 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 fact that you received a prophetic word also the fact that the exposure to community work itself um you know begins to strike a chord in your heart mm-hmm. uh, and will there's something I've remembered we need to go back to the fact that you also used to rap <laughs> <laughs> yes sorry <Karen Atta. laughs> and I yes. don't know why you you skip to that <laughs> I know you as we uh, have to keep uh, something uh, hidden <laughs> as, a, as a rapper so um but I, I'd like to 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 just dwell a little on 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 how all of 
the fact that you were already quote unquote in the system in the spiritual system yes and that whatever direction that you're going to take this is the first time i've had you mention um you know the the role of like prophecy and the role of um how how are you interpreting um church and scripture and prophecy and given that you are entirely exposed to it um and how how at that point especially now being the fact the fact that you're serving a lot more in church mm-hmm. and you're you are constantly in in the midst of fellowship and in, i mean it's a, it, it, compassion international is housed within a church yes so how what what are what are your reflections around that um so this uh, i i met a good friend who introduced me to the church that they go to mm-hmm. that's how i met you right ah. oh the good okay <laughs> yes okay <laughs> that's how we connected mm-hmm. lily and apostle mm-hmm. um so she's sharing this um things that they learned in church mm-hmm. and they just connect mm-hmm. and whenever there's like a seminar or something mm-hmm. um i'm i'm there mm-hmm. and that church was different mm-hmm. from my parents the, the, the church that my parents used to pastor mm-hmm in the sense that it was being led by a young pastor right, right? Mm. so they are using tech they mm. are like even the language mm. and the presentation of everything mm. was something that i could definitely connect with mm. so I'm, i'm i'm seeing these two things where my parents teach the word mm-hmm. but also do and serve mm. in in and demonstrate it mm. in, in 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 very difficult circumstances mm-hmm. but i'm also seeing this guy who's speaking in a way that it feels like it's relevant mm. to me mm. and actually the prophetic word came from him pastor mm. judah mm. um back then the church was called what i t o t it's time, time our time, time. Ministry, yeah it's it's, right. it's yeah changed mm. since mm. then mm. and his call was really for young people mm. and so with compassion international I'm working with young people mm. and the one of the things that <clears throat> sadly it's still a problem in a lot of churches mm-hmm. as long as you are doing good mm. you don't have to be excellent at it yeah. you, it's almost like it's fine as long mm. as you are doing good mm. right mm. it's those things when people presenting in church say mm. do not listen to their voice mm. listen to the message right listen to the words <laughs> yes mm. listen to the words mm. and i was like i'm in an environment where excellence is demanded mm-hmm how we set up how mm. we do things mm. and then i start working with him mm. i start serving in that church mm. and i'm beginning to see now behind the scenes and mm. just the lengths and mm. the level of depth mm. that these guys have mm. in preparing in prayer mm. but also in excellence mm. in planning and projecting mm. those kind of things mm. and that was a whole new world mm. for me mm. i met um you i mm. met oscar who mm. was um i was serving under his department mm. he was leading me mm. and oscar is oscar rigi oscar rigi mm. yes mm. the the one and only mm. and i'm serving under him mm. and we are doing a church meeting at aboreta mm. we are discussing things but he's teaching you like people are passing by right mm. he's like everyone who's here um in this meeting is required to say how many people are wearing blue mm. that mm. will pass by mm. so he's teaching you to just be aware conscious of your conscious environment, of your environment mm. and how to do things quickly mm. and this is this is church mm. and it's so different yeah and just the impact that he had on me was mm. huge him Tremendous. yourself mm. um omari mm. like mm. significant impact mm. on mm. young people mm doing it very differently mm. and itot wasn't even very resource it wasn't like a church for the wealthy that's true it, it was just how people were thinking mm. Mm. and now putting those two worlds together mm. Mm. began to make a lot of sense mm. for me for the first time mm. and church suddenly started looking like maybe this is not so bad mm. Mm. yeah so 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 amazing that that transition so it didn't look so bad so you are in campus how does that what, so t- take us through that period when you're still in campus and doing doing a bit of ministry do you start doing do you start now reflecting other than serving at ITOT do you also start 
reflecting the same things within the community and how does that also go alongside your university education? So I hated this, <laughs> my university education. There was nothing wrong with this stuff. Yeah. Amazing space. Yeah. I just didn't like school. Mm. At that point, I am. Mm. I'm, I'm just like, why do I have to do this? And the only reason I'm in school is because of my parents. Mm. Like, if they had not insisted, I would Baba, done a two-year degree. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then now there's a prophetic one, mm. and I'm just like, ah, okay, I, I just have to do this. Mm. And and uh, I also, I, I really didn't like just being in class mm. because I had my own issues with the education system that we have. I still struggle with that. Mm. Um, I just feel like it can be more creative, more vibrant. Mm. Mm. There's a better way of learning. Mm. So I was struggling with that. So my, my courses were designed. I, mm. I used to make sure mm. I don't have a Friday class. So I, I'll pick <laughs> whatever course just to make sure at least I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday mm. outside of this space. Mm. And um, I was in Athi River. Mm did what I could and switched to the evening program mm. um, at the Nairobi campus, mm -hmm. Valley Road campus, yeah. just to minimize mm. my time in school. Mm. And so as I'm doing that, mm -hmm. of course, I'm making friends, mm. I'm connecting with people mm. and I'm learning and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that in my mind, I do not like education as it is being presented, mm. which is funny because later on, most of my work, most of my impact has been in the education space. <laughs> yeah. A lot of my development work is mm. connected to schools and education. Mm. So I was just going through the emotions, but then I find church. Mm -hmm. And because I'm working in Madare, I'm also realizing that education is key. Mm. We, we need education in this space, proper quality education, mm. um, if we are really going to transform this, mm. this space mm -hmm. and, and, and just impact lives and give them a way out. Mm. So it was, I, I was just learning and unlearning, mm. loving, falling mm. in love and hating something. Mm. So it, it was just an interesting time of just being stretched mm. where kingdom, education and the reality in Madhari mm. are all mm. coming together. Mm. Yeah. Was there a first, was there outside of uh, serving at Compassion, and then also serving at um, ITOT, was there, do you remember the first thing then that based on what you're saying, the, the, the intersection of community education and, and, and faith, do you remember then a point where you said, as Steve, I want to do this, and what was that? So when I was, so I'm at ITOT, but mm -hmm. not fully, I'm still, I, I mean, my dad is a pastor, I have to show up at his church, yeah. right? Yeah. But then there's this pull to, to fully give myself to ITOT. Mm -hmm. And I struggle with it. Mm. And eventually I feel like God is actually saying, mm. leave Madare. Mm -hmm. And initially I was just like, I don't want to leave Madare. Mm. And there's something I want to say that I, I hope will not be taken out of context. Mm. But Madare and most of spaces like this do have a smell. Because they see one and everything else. Mm. Mm. But I never used to, when I was new, I would smell it. Mm. But after some time, you mm. just adjust, right? Mm. Mm. And Madare was home. Mm. I, I was looking to move to Madare. Mm. All my friends were in Madare. Mm. So other mm. than school, mm. Madare is where I was. Mm. And I completely fell in love mm. with Madare. Mm. I used to wake up and just spend hours and hours and hours in Madare. Mm. Mm. Um, got a house there, I wanted to pay rent. Then my dad was like, no way, <laughs> do not even. Mm. Yeah, mm. there, you're mm. still my child. Mm. And um, he was basically protecting me because he knew as a pastor's child, if I lived there, not as a pastor's child, but as his child, mm. there would be pressure on me yeah. that is undue. Like, you would be the go-to person. Yeah, I would for be the go-to person. Your house would always be, you yes. know, <laughs> we've come for dinner. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I didn't have money mm, at all. I was still mm. getting my 6K stipend, mm. so it wasn't enough. Mm. But, and, and and he was wise enough to mm. say no, mm. and, and I'm, I'm grateful to, to him for that. Mm. But I'm in love with Madare, then mm. God is telling me, move. Mm. And I'm like, he can't be God. This is the devil, mm. right? Trying to disconnect me from serving God, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the word comes again mm. from Pastor Jay. Mm. And then you tell me, you are supposed to move, right? And now I'm spending a lot of time <laughs> in ITOT. Yeah. 
and I'm like, and and of course my my, my dad was mad when mm. I told him. Mm. I think I'm supposed to move. He was like, no, um, because I think it was just hard. How do I pastor church? Mm. I was already a leader in that space, mm. and now you are mm. leaving mm. to go to a this other church that mm. I don't even know about. Mm. But eventually, I was asked like, this is God. But it was difficult. Mm. But I move. Mm. But now Sundays I'm in. ITOT mm. and as soon as service is over You're back I'm back in my diary because yeah, this is this is my as... space these yeah. are my people I yeah. love it there yeah then you come and tell me mm. Steve you're supposed to give yourself fully to this space I, I, disconnect I, I don't know <laughs> I, I don't know who that guy and is and I'm like what <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and so Madari begins to smell mm. again oh. so now when I visit I'm just like this place smells terrible mm. and it was so confusing mm. but at that moment that's when i knew mm. i need to leave so wow. i left mm. in, in in obedience mm. and um now i'm fully in itot mm. and i'm doing my my finishing my my university mm. education at desta mm. so now mother is removed mm. i'm now I'm now submerged into this very different world mm. where service and people looks very different mm. and i'm being stretched and i'm learning mm. and eventually I'm, i'm still my now my some of my key friends like in mm. a jay king mm. like in a andrew mm. um like in a joyce who's now my wife mm. follow me to, to itot because because yeah. i was i was i was their leader mm. then sure. and i was their friend mm. so they follow me and mm. that kind of but i didn't call them i didn't ask mm. them they were just mm. like you stopped mm. coming so we'll start coming with mm. you and we all love it mm. and i think that kind of settled me a mm. bit and mm. i just decided let me learn mm. and grow in mm. this space mm. that gives me shivers just i mean I, it's a story i think i know but just as you reflect on that i'm i'm like what you did then is is a uh, is significant because you <laughs> I, i would like to hear a little bit more on the impact that had on you and and also the, does it then translate into you're saying you're learning you're stretching you're making new friends a, a few of the friends that you've had have, have, have joined you but what what's that period doing to you so one mm. is i'm in a space where the pastor is not my father mm. so there is no people are not treating you differently mm. um so that begins just to shift some things mm. um and i think it i, I enjoyed it because mm. it just allowed me mm. to be to be mm. to be more of myself mm. um I'm, i'm and i'm also forming very deep relationships mm. with yourself um mm. omari and um oscar mm. and you guys are bringing me into a new world right mm. you're, you're taking me to the studio <laughs> and i'm like this is so cool mm. right i've never seen anything like this mm. um Oscar just who he is mm. and Omari who they are and just how they think. Mm. So I'm beginning to think much more strategically just mm. about life. Mm. I'm beginning to believe things and just grow my faith mm. in 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 small incidences. Mm. I remember um Oscar sharing a story of how he's planning to buy a car mm. because he's planning like he's about to get married mm. and it's like yeah we need baby mm. baby might come mm. and like He just gives that an, an example and immediately I'm like I need to make sure I have a car mm. before my child comes mm. and I'm not expecting a child then but mm. I'm just picking up mm. small things, things like yeah those. that mm. people believe in and hold as standards for themselves mm. and because they do and I see it happen mm. it suddenly looks like ah this is possible this mm. is possible mm. and I used to rem- I, I remember I used to joke like my ta- my child will not ride in a matatu mm. not because there's anything I mean my kids are riding matatus mm. right mm. not there's because there's anything wrong in that space mm. but for me then mm. that was such something that I needed to believe mm. God for mm. like how, how will I buy my own car mm. and even like when you are um, going for clinics now, later on and I'm married and my wife is pregnant when we are going for the clinic mm. i would even borrow cars from my sister mm. or someone else mm. and i remember flying out once and um leaving you guys the responsibility to take my child to the clinic okay mm. yeah to my my wife then mm. for mm. her clinic checkup mm. and i'm like guys my child does not try <laughs> in our talk to kind yeah. of thing so figure yeah. this out mm. but just picking up simple things mm. setting your bare minimum max. yes mm. but from this space mm. where it's not just 
it's it's both the ministry mm. this is how we operate mm. but then seeing them set standards of mm. how they treat their wives mm. and how they treat they do relationships how mm. they relate and how they serve mm. that just laid another foundation mm. for me mm. that i had it's it's something i had not received mm. from my parents mm. or from any other mm. space at that mm. Mm. and that felt like education mm. on its own mm. 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 yeah and and, and so at, at this uh, <laughs> you are um you say you are struggling uh, you know with the idea of being in uh, in, in the learning environment yeah. because more learning is happening like from a different environment mm -hmm. um do you do you defer do you finish what happens so mm -hmm. i switch to evening classes mm -hmm. which i tend to enjoy more because mm -hmm. now you have the day yeah the day but now even the students who come for evening classes ah. are older students mm. they are guys who are working mm. and so the vibe is different mm. the same lecturer treats yeah. you differently mm. and um and and the just the conversations there mm. the interactions and mm. now making friends yeah. with guys who are ceos yeah. and stuff like that and yeah. i'm loving that more yeah. yeah the lived reality here is very different exactly from a person who has the full day to be in school. Yes, mm. yes. And mm. and now even the examples you guys are sharing in school mm. and how you spend your free time mm. and and how you guys hang out is different. Mm. Mm. And I think I enjoyed that mm. more because mm. um, now I'm also learning from them mm -hmm. and not just from the lecturer. Yeah. Yeah. But now the lecturer, we had really good lecturers mm -hmm um because i experienced them in both settings mm. in the day school mm. and in the evening classes with younger students and the older students same lecturer same content showing up but differently yeah showing mm. up differently and even the the examples mm. that they are using they relate in yeah, a different completely. way completely mm. and so now that made me much more comfortable mm. and mm. I, I i ended up finishing mm. um while enjoying that mm, experience right right more. at least it changes yeah <laughs> and and it's one of the things that i encourage people mm. like if if you can do evening classes mm. um for a season of your life mm. do because mm. it's a very different crowd yeah. and you yeah. learn yeah because it's not just from the lecturer it's from the environment yeah and the how people are rushing to be traffic to be there yes the, the stories they'll tell of the last meeting that they had before they left the office yeah, yeah. or where they're going next yes. you know just the environment <laughs> is different yeah, yeah. for for that so yeah. um so do you then i mean then uh, i'm assuming you graduate how how does that period go into um now posts i taught posts graduate post i taught and post uh, finishing daysta um or is there is there is there a time there that you begin now serving more in madare so then i feel like it's my time to go back to go back okay mm -hmm. and um when i'm finishing daysta mm -hmm. I had done part of my practicum in Madare. Mm. So my dad's um, my parents now have set up a new church plant mm -hmm. um, from the previous one. They mm. moved from Redeem Gospel Church, now they've founded Madare Worship Center. Mm -hmm. And they are running a school. Mm. And I do my practicum there, my final practicum partly because it's available, mm. but partly because I wanted to use what I had learned. Mm to help them set the structures mm. for the projects they had a feeding program mm. had a clinic and mm. stuff like that mm. so that's when i move mm. and um i'm there as part of my education mm -hmm. but i feel like there's a release for me like it's time to come back mm. Mm. and eventually now um talk to pastor j mm. which is also difficult mm. i can imagine yes mm. um and just yeah tell him uh, it's time it's for time. me and so yeah. i transit back into mm. into madare so the very first sort of like steve led project was 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 that was nioth yeah so nioth school. is a ministry mm -hmm. yeah nioth school mm -hmm. uh, it's already founded it's been run mm. but i'm just helping I'm giving my recommendations, mm, right? Mm. And I remember my, some of my recommendations were read now that I look back were mm. really funny cuz mm -hmm. I was just like telling my dad in my report I have proposed that we shut down the school, <laughs> right? <laughs> cuz they didn't oh, have dear. books, uh. they didn't have resources at all. Mm. Um they hadn't even intentionally set out in setting up the school. Mm. It's just that when they set up the church, mm. kids used to hang out mm at that space during mm. the week mm. young kids mm. and my dad got someone to just take like a them. caretaker mm. make sure these kids are fine mm. and um they're taking care of the kids and once there's someone to take care of them more kids start coming 
you know the most amazing thing about just that is that it's 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 needs based it's people centered as it can get because you're like yeah there is what we've set up here is a space for spiritual growth yeah. but what's presented itself is bigger than that so we need to be able to respond and we won't wait for perfection we'll yeah. start with what we can so yeah. a teacher <laughs> yes. or a caretaker and <laughs> yeah. then it, 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 uh -huh. and that's how the school grew mm. and and so it was kind of just them going after this this is the community god has placed us in mm -hmm. to do this mm. but this is a need how mm. do we respond mm. but i'm i'm from a space where I've been taught to think strategically Strategy. and yeah. have proposals mm. and budgets mm. and both in school and also in ministry. In ministry. Mm. So I'm like this this will not work. And so mm. I'm giving my recommendations because mm. the teacher has to there, there was a school next to Nioth um, called Kiboro, Kiboro Primary School. Mm. Public school so slightly more resourced. Mm. Um our teachers used to dash to borrow textbooks for the next lesson and I'm just like yeah this is not sustainable. And so I tell my dad, mm. uh, we can keep the clinic, we can keep the daycare. I think those ones are running well. But for the school, I think we need to shut it down. And the building itself is a building that was designed to be a bar and lodging. Mm. So the bar part, the, like the hall, mm. is where we are doing church mm. services, the meetings. And then the lodging parts mm. and, and, and complete buildings mm. that my dad ended up completing, fixing doors and stuff mm. and windows is what becomes the classroom. So tiny things. Mm. But my dad asked me, if we tell these kids to go, where will they go? Mm. And that also changed something in me. And I was like, okay, um, they have come. They've not been called. Mm. They have come. Mm. What can we give? And mm. now I just started looking for ways mm to give. Mm. Um, I ended up starting an organization called LEPTA. Mm -hmm. And LEPTA is connected to part of my upbringing mm -hmm. and part of what I had considered privilege because I was the brightest. Mm. I just got more attention mm. I, in, in school mm. when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, I, would, I would get more attention and mm. stuff like that. Mm. But I realized what happens to the person mm who's not academically inclined, because not mm. everyone will become the top student. Mm. Yet they're gifted. Mm. They're they are very, very gifted. And DESTA also was part of the lesson, because when I ended up in DESTA, I'm with, in the same class with students who are average. Mm. And you begin to realize, as you grow older, there's a leveling that happens. Mm. But how do we bring these opportunities to people much earlier? Yeah so that they don't have to struggle as much. Mm. And so I, so Lepta is based on a story in the Bible about a widow who mm -hmm. gives two copper coins. So mm. guys are giving offering mm. and Jesus is there looking, right? So he looks and mm. just like, mm. guys are dropping who lots of God? money, mm. right? Mm. Um, and then this poor widow um, drops two copper coins mm. and they're called Lepta mm. um, in, in, in the Greek. Mm. And that's the smallest denomination mm. that you can give. So it's not a lot. Mm. But then Christ tells his disciples, guys have dropped bags of money, but she has given the most, the most mm. because she's given all that she has. This is it. And um, a lot of how programs work, especially in the education space, mm. um, when it comes to scholarships, mm. was the brightest and the best mm. get the scholarships, get. right? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. But then what happens to the rest? Mm. So Lepta was, as long as you're willing to give your all, mm. we will um, work with you. In a way, I mean, this is now contextualizing also to development because you, 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 you are mentioning it. From that, from that root of, of Nioth and the needs that the children are presenting themselves, and what Lepta, you know, about giving your all, um, one of the things you're pointing towards is the fact that the, under, the underserved, but also seemingly undeserving, are more in need and often than are the ones who are neglected because of criteria, yes. because of um, things. And what you are beginning to shift already at least from the from the from the from what your dad mentions about um what will happen to these ones if we let them go then it's not about the perfection of what we can even give is the fact that 
today here and now it needs to happen there is a, a real need a felt need for this particular time we don't need a perfect solution what we, I, we don't even we don't even need a perfect program yeah. <laughs> but what we need is to be able to get them through today and tomorrow i think the strategy part that you're mentioning is the one that puts things about sustainability affordability uh, quality things like those into perspective which i don't think you lose because yeah. you are mentioning that you know you still bring th that mentality into this um, but i'm interested to hear then how does lepta and 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 uh, so does lepta and giving the most that people can connect and begin addressing the needs of of nayo so uh, one so my parents my parents have not been to a development school right mm. so they don't have needs based mm. strategies mm. and responses mm. it's just for them it's development through relationship mm. Mm. like we care and um whether you are wealthy whether you are poor we care and if there's a need we can respond to we we we, we will respond to mm. so it's 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 development based on relationship That's and i'm beginning powerful. to learn that mm. and i'm beginning to see it in action mm. and so lepta is connected to that so now it's like in a j king mm. and like in a anto and rose kavuli mm. and liz and, and the late Dorothy. yeah and doty mm. and um we we are trying to so i'm the only guy who's not from Adare. Mm. and so there's no funding there's mm. not too much resource my, my parents church um is not funded by anyone outside mm. um they're now just beginning to develop some partnerships mm. which we ended up developing mm -hmm. but it's just bare minimum right mm. so mm. it's a young church and they're just investing mm -hmm. and putting things in there mm. Um, luckily, my, my my siblings are now my, myself and my sister out of high school, so mm. they they don't have that campus, pressure out of campus. Mm. Sorry, mm. Yeah, out of campus, mm. um, so we are able to to, to get by. Mm. But there's a struggle. But mm. this is it. This is this this is now their baby, mm. and they are giving their all. Mm. So within that space, I've done my community development. Mm -hmm. I have to get employed because mm. there is no other source of money. Mm. So I start working for an adoption agency mm. called Little Angels. Mm -hmm. And so that money allows me to fund Lepta mm. to give back. Yeah, to give back. Mm. And so Lepta. Um, we have like a tiny space in my in the building that my parents are renting out in Madare, mm. and we our first program ended up being scholarships for girls, mm. and we are really struggling. So we mm. are writing proposals because mm. that's what I've been taught to do, mm. but no one is giving us any money. Mm. I think we only got one person, one company, Shell BP mm. back then. Mm. They gave us a little bit of money, mm. but this is the interesting thing. Um, Every proposal we write, we send it to Akina. Guys, we are like championing with mm. girls because mm. we were focusing on girls, girls then. Mm. Um, as a result of Mongiki mm. being in Madare mm. and the people who are most at risk were young girls because mm. they were just getting married by force. Like yeah. if, if a guy who was senior in Mongiki mm. decided you are mine, mm. then that's it. Mm. And so we want to send them off to high school mm. boarding school it has to be boarding school just mm. to keep them safe yeah so we send out proposals not coming through but then our friends hear about the work my mm. sister hears mm. about it um mm. rosa mm. she's working with these guys who are doing insurance mm. um, mahinda and mm. mahinda mm. decides uh, how mm. much will it cost for this one person mm. what do they need and we send off this one child mm. and then we make friends with guys from um it, it wasn't it was a home bible church mm -hmm. led by a guy called davy mm -hmm. uh, david kimani right yeah and it was connected to mavuno mm. um and so they, they come through mm. and they begin to help us and mm. work with us so you mm. have friends mm. and now we're also building relationships mm. outside of that who mm. now journey with us and mm. begin to work with us mm. and we, st we we still those are relationships that we still maintain yeah and so we begin now later with hindsight this is we say about lepta with j king who now mm. runs it mm. it's lepta has never had money mm. but we've always had people right so it's never lacked 
it's never lacked because of the people. Mm. So if we needed to pay for anything, people mm. would come through. Mm. If we needed someone to come do training mm. and talk to our girls, mm. they would come do it for free. Mm. Um, if you needed whatever it is, mm. and that's just true that's, to date, right? Mm, mm. But we're also developing other partnerships mm. with now friends um, from the US mm. who become partners. Mm -hmm and um, programs are being birthed mm. from that. Mm. But a lot of it, I think the center of it was still mm. very relational. So mm. even our partners do not have, this is the criteria, mm. it's we are now in relationship with mm. them mm. and how do we work together mm. to make a difference? That's, that's very profound because it's, I, <laughs> I think you're speaking to the heart of what community development is. And when you mention development through or via relationship i don't think there is anything more powerful than that even for where there is like enormous resources where there is like the most amount of money if the relationship part fails then it it completely goes um it completely goes away and asunder